and and then take on my property. And I said, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. save Scott, it all. We'll go with Scott, you. that's recording, so you guys talk. Have some fun. This, this show's recording now. Are we on live? No, not yet. Not yet, okay. You, you let me know when you're set live. I'm ready. You ready to go? I'm going to turn my phone Troy, go out there and tell them. Oh. Is that good? good? Yeah, it's very good. Go up so the crew and shit's gone. Yeah, yeah, like that. It doesn't say Mendy's gym, though. Yeah, I know. Just leave it. It's fine. So all right, all right, all right. Yeah, just leave it. It's fine. The well, BLM people are already out there. <clears throat> yeah. I heard. Dude, my boy in New York is at yep. riots right yeah. now. My boy yeah. was a cop. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Hang on. Checking connection. All right, guys, sorry we're a little bit late, but we're always a little bit late because that's how fucking life is, you know what I mean? Traffic, this, that. Welcome back to Scott Mendelssohn's The Podium. Um, I realized that, you know, I've been offline for a little while because of the shutdown and everything, and I just was trying to stay under the radar, which I am now over the radar. Um, but we are back, and I could not think of anybody better than my boy, Ryan Canelli. What's up, bro? What's up, brother? Long time no <laughs> see, dude. Damn, it's been a while. Yeah, man, it's been a ton Fuck. of time, bro. Yeah. I but you know what? We look good, bro. We look good. Yeah. We're up in age, but we're fucking still doing <laughs> we're, it because the Warriors we are. Remember that Rocky movie when he said, I've got a little bit left in the basement? Fuck yeah. Yeah, man. you know what I mean? I know what you mean. The basement's full. Yeah. We're not so. in our late 20s anymore, early nah, 30s, man, nah. but fuck, we're doing it. Hey, but you know what? I tell people, I go, bro. If you could put a USB cable from my head to your head or your head to their head, they would just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. You know mind, what I mean? Fucking mind boggling. I know, bro. It's I'll crazy. try not to use the F word. It's my favorite word. No, say so fuck as much as you oh, want, right, bro. man. To me, fuck is a food group. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so it's it. totally fine. You'd be comfortable. This is a UBU kind of podcast. You know what I mean? I so okay. I want you to be comfortable and just, you know, we're just going to let it out. And, yeah, let's let it roll. And have a good time. So... I want to start with your childhood. Um, give us a little background about like your birth and you know how you know where what area you grew up in and so forth and so. Yeah, on. well, you know, I was born in nineteen. Well, I shouldn't tell them. Don't tell them that. Okay. Tell them yeah. Where. yeah, Richland, Washington, and uh, yeah, I came. I was seven point seven pounds when I was born, and uh, as growing up, of course, you know, right, right. My, my parents put me into soccer as a sport, excelled at it like the world champion I am, and. Um, uh, I started playing soccer and uh, loved it and did it to like the seventh grade. Right. And then, you know, my dad was a power lifter and he was a big man. And uh, he played football in high school, but I, my, I was, I genetically didn't blossom until I hit my senior year in high school. Oh, you were so one of those I was guys. Narrow, narrow shouldered. Went away from on. vacation, came back a monster. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I said, um, after playing soccer for many years, I wanted to try something else. In seventh grade, I tried out for football. And I uh, went out, I did uh, one practice. Um, when I got knocked down, I couldn't get up. Yeah. I was a puss. Hey, I admit it, man. I, I, I was genetically uh, uh, ungifted in my early years. Um, it could have been, I believe it was, to a bike, uh, motorcycle accident. I, in fifth grade, I was crossing the street with my friends, and a motorcycle came around the corner, knocked me out, uh, put a seven-inch... Um, crack in my rear cranium. I was in a coma for two months. Holy fuck. Or no, two, two weeks. I'm sorry. And, uh, Still? Yeah, holy fuck. Yeah, they didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, they said when I come out of the coma, if I live past 18, I'll have a healthy life. But if I, I may die between 18 and 21. So growing up knowing that um, was very terrifying. And Now, I don't mean to interrupt, but now I know why your mom said what she said to me. Yeah. I was grilling you to, at the Arnold so you would show up. You remember that? On GoHeavy.com? Yes. Yeah. And your mom Jumped emailed on there. me. Yeah. And she said, Scott, you don't know what my son has been through. Yeah. It gives me chills, now, dude. Now I, I understand, yeah, bro. Yeah. Now I get it. So, uh, yeah, I, did, I actually didn't show up at football practice anymore because I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, and it scared me. Like, I, I failed and... Uh, uh, went into high school, and you know my dad. Uh, growing up, he uh, physically, mentally abused, yeah. and um, lived in, lived in fear of him for a long time. And I didn't like that feeling of living yeah. in fear. Going into high school, Did, didn't we all have that? It was like I think that was like a way of growing up in the seventies. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the eighties, yeah. You just got the fuck kicked out of you. Yeah, and and nobody, that's nobody, what it was. Nobody raises their kids like that anymore. No, no. yeah, I was, I was belt spanking, um, you know, wooden spoon from mom, 
uh, you know, and I took my lickings. But uh, in high school, you know, uh, I knew I wasn't going to impress my dad playing football or I couldn't play football. I wasn't. I wanted to be a pitcher in baseball. I was no good at that. And track and soccer. I was like, fuck, that's not a man's sport. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so, you know, uh, we had in uh, PE, you know, we had weightlifting. Right. And uh, right. the story, I've told the story many times, but my sophomore year, we went in there and um, I laid on the bench. And it, was, I t- it was everything to get one rep with 135. Yeah. And I think I weighed 155. And um, I remember this high school kid right after me got on the bench and did it for 10 reps, and I fucking was scarred for life. Yeah. And I hated him forever. And, yeah, but um, you know something? What? What do you think he's thinking now? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the bus, man. You know what I mean? But uh, then I there was a fuck r- that motherfucker, him, dude. And I fuck sat, him. I, I sat next fuck to him in debate, and I looked at him. I flunked debate because he sat next to me, and I just yeah, I wanted to, I wanted, I just wanted to destroy him. So, and that's kind of where that competitive mentality started. And um, of course, there was record boards in high school, and the biggest bench did lift and squat. Right. I could. I was a soccer player. We, my dad had a universal gym in the house growing up in fifth, sixth grade. Oh, the plate loaded yeah. universal thing. Yeah, 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 yeah it had yeah, the yeah. leg extension on it. I did that all the time to impress my friends. I'd invite them over. I'd load all the weights my dad had on it, and then I'd have them sit on the end, and I'd do leg extensions. Right. So I, I, my legs were fucking strong. I was squatting two plates a sophomore year. Yeah. But I wanted to bench. Yeah. You know, yeah. watching yeah. professional wrestling growing yeah. up, Hulk Hogan, twenty-four inch biceps. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be big and bad. I wanted to be the biggest, baddest motherfucker walking face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I knew in high school. Yeah, hey, I just want to say I'm sorry. For what? Because you weren't the biggest, baddest motherfucker. <laughs> We're both the biggest, baddest motherfucker. No, we but I want, we are. But you guys know hey, what's up. Hey, look at the record board, Scott. I, hey, want, I, know, I know. I know. Okay. I know. I know. But in your head. Okay. Fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So uh, yeah. So the uh, you know uh, sophomore, I, I got pushed around high school too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got bumped and shit, elbow yeah. checked and all this shit. And it, fear of people. I didn't, lived in fear of fucking people. I, I didn't, couldn't fight back. Tuck my tail between my legs. Uh, yada yada yada. But uh, out of high school, I decided to uh, go to the gym and get big. Yeah. Uh, weight li- um, there wasn't powerlifting USA at the time, before I'm aware of. In '93, and uh, you know, I bought bodybuilder magazines. Yeah, sure. And what the fuck are they? That's what they were. What, yeah. what vitamins is in the back of the page is there? And. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, my Me friend. Too. Me too. My friend worked at GNC at the time, and and of course, you know, he was he was a no good kid, bad seed, and he would have me pull up in the back of the mall at six o'clock when it closed, and he load up my truck with everything. I was jeans, <laughs> dude. I I had a table probably big as this. You couldn't see the wood. I mean, I, I had cybergenics, uh, hot stuff, Yo Himbe, Ultimate Orange. I mean, oh, dude, no. do you remember the original Ultimate Orange? Dude, with the uh, Fedra, that real Fedra. Fucking good, dude. Oh, dude, and uh, and yeah. then all of a sudden. They got popped and it came back out of the market and it was like watered down. What the fuck is this? Yeah. It was garbage. So, you know, we, uh, my buddy and I, we'd come home from work, worked at a restaurant, you know, and uh, come home, we'd uh, take all these pills, oh, uh, Mega Mass 4000, you know, tasted like sand and water, 5,000 calorie, go to the gym. You know, I benched every day. Yeah. I didn't know better. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, That's so, we all did. yeah, I kept coming into the gym, these old timers, <laughs> they were 40, 42 at the time, those yeah. old timers. They said, man, you benching again, Canelli? Oh, yeah. And I fucking benched, benched, and benched. And of course, you know, you do that um, for a couple of years. You train, you know, you walk around, and then people run into you and tell you, damn, you're getting big. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm 198 now. I'm 205. I'm 220. And uh, I just uh, kept it going, man. How old were you at 220? Oh, I was probably 20, 21, 1995. Okay. Okay. There. Yeah, and uh, I was like 220, and. Um, uh, I remember at the time, you know, uh, I, I, uh, uh, Phil Hernan came to our gym. Yeah, sure, I knew Fuck, Phil. Yeah, Phil. Fucking beast. Beast. He came out. He, I he mean, died. I, did he? Yeah, dude, he died. Oh, shit. Yeah, he did a little seminar. He came in and he did like 150 dumbbells and he had a product that uh, he sold in Hood River, Oregon. And it, it was a long ways away, but um, it was HGF1 and, and gen, uh, high, God, I forget, one was a liquid, one was a pill. Long story short, you, I went, I drove all the way down to Hood River, Oregon, in this gym. I walked in, the supplements were locked up, and I said, I want the IGF-1 and hygienotropin liquid or whatever, and he went back to this room. These uh, double white doors opened, and there were guys back there in lab coats. And it was like 20 minutes, they came out and he handed it to me. Long story short, I went back, the pills did nothing, but every Friday we took a medicine dropper of this, uh, I think it was called I, IHGF-1 or something, it was no shit. At one at one ninety five body weight, every Friday we max effort benched. We'd go to McDonald's. Big Macs were two for two bucks. Right, right. I, right, right, right. I, I, the first Friday I went in, I got seven Big Macs. I can't do that right now. <laughs> no. 
And I was like, this is a fluke. When you're young, you can eat like a fucking Fuck, horse. I, I, yeah, the next I week know. I did the same thing, took a dropper of the stuff. We went there and the chickens were two for two bucks. And eight or nine of those. Yeah. And uh, and I actually got a hold of him years ago and asked him if that product was still available. And I don't know what he told me, but uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. Deer antler, a fuzz. Yeah, I don't yeah whatever it was, it kicked your shit. It worked, out. dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I found something that had worked. You know. Let me tell you, that motherfucker was one of the thickest dudes. He was thick, he short, he was but he was a fucking beast. He was a fucking yeah. beast, man. He impressed me, man. You know, Rest in know, peace, bro. Those are mo motivational people you meet along the way, sure. including yourself. Thank you, brother. Thank You're welcome. You. Well, you motivated me too, bro. Yeah. It was a. It was a. I, like kind of like venom. It was a symbiotic relationship where we both fed off of each other. We did. And I think that that, like, like when I broke the all-time world record and I was sitting there. And well, what like, number was it? It was eight seventy-five. You called me that morning. I tell that story all the time, Scott. It was Saturday morning. I sat down on my computer chair. I was eating my <laughs> Captain Crunch. The fucking phone rings. What do I hear? I took your record, bro. <laughs> and I had to go on somewhere, and I watched it. You did it on a beach somewhere. Yeah, Venice Beach. Fuck yeah. And I was like, you son of a bitch. And that yeah. fueled my fire, man. Well, do you remember? Like, here's what happened. I was 100 pounds ahead of the whole world. You were. And I was fucking bored. So I call you up, and I'm like, hey, bro. You want to fucking get big? You want to bench 1,000 pounds? And you're like, fuck yeah, I want to bench 1,000 pounds. So I gave him my diet program. You did. You did. And you, look, you when I was telling you what to take, you looked at me and what'd you say? I don't know what I said, but you I said, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yeah, you know, you told you told me if I want to be big, I had to eat uh, four twenty five hundred calorie shakes a day. So I, I, you know, I was sponsored by Bob O'Leary Supplements, that I could get anything I wanted, and I ordered that. Uh, um, oh, I forget the brand. Twenty five hundred calorie shake, and I tell this story all the time to people. And I took four scoops of that, put it in a blender. I think you said to use whole milk. I put whole milk. Uh, it was whole milk, applesauce, protein yeah. powder, and oatmeal that was uncooked. Well, let me tell you something. After you blend that up, Scott, it's a blizzard. You go upside down, and I couldn't drink it. I know. So I got the 1875 uh, Champion Nutrition. Right. And I started mixing that with a little bit of fat-free milk, and I was getting those down. But having those um, high-calorie shakes, you know, because you know your body can't assimilate uh, nine meals of food a day. Right. So you know, I had the high-calorie shakes in between, and it changed my life, man. Yeah, totally. It made me, it made me a monster. You know who actually taught me that? No. Rich Piana. Rich Piana. He goes, bro, you want to get fucking big, bro? Oatmeal, applesauce, protein powder, and whole milk. Yeah. So I was getting those packets of oatmeal. You know the the ready packets. Yep. You know the pla the yep. paper ones. Quick rope. So I started with two. I'm fucking blending it up, and I'm drinking a the motherfucker. Then I go to three. Then I go to four. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Today I'm fucking, dude, I'm like 390 pounds yeah. at this point. And I go, I'm going five. Well, I'm going fucking five. So I blend five of them in. Now they're uncooked. So basically, you can take more product in, and when it hits your stomach, it expands. Right. So I drink five of these motherfuckers. I have an in-home client. I used to have this fucking Hummer that was blown all crazy. So I get in the Hummer, I start the car up, I take a breath, and dude, it just expanded and went ah, all over my fucking car, bro. Whoa. And I'm trying to puke out the window and the window shut, splash, in my fucking face. I get it down and I call my client, I'm like, dude, I just puked all over my fucking car and I had to get a detail. It was like a $300 detail. If you leave it right there, it smells like death. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? Fuck, right. Old protein? Fuck. Death. So anyway, the moral of the story was I went back to four and I stayed there. So, you know, we're all good. We're all good. Yeah. But that's where I learned it from. And I remember that I told this story today. You, know, you mentioned you were 390. And I think at the 2010 Olympia, when you walked in there, dude, and you got a big head. Right. But when you were that big, your body was fucking so square, and you had this little melon and no neck. <laughs> and everybody walked up to me. I was, I was at the uh, MHP booth. And I, I looked at you, and you were fucking biggest I've ever seen you do. Really? Yeah, you were the oh Jesus, yeah. I don't know if it was three ninety or four ten, but fuck. no, three ninety was the limit. God, I, I tried biggest to go. I've ever seen you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. biggest it, I ever got was three sixty three. So. And dude, you look fucking because you're taller than me, yeah. bro. So you well, look like to. a fucking monster. Yeah, being bro. six two and a half with a bench stroke that long, I had to get that torso. No, no, you got to even it out to shorten it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, get I wasn't it. born with little Tyrannosaurus Rex arms, you know. You know, when I was young, I had a gut, you know, and they're like, diet down, diet down. So what I did was I just got so fucking big that the gut disappeared. Oh. And that was it. <laughs> oh, I got it. Yeah. 
But uh, so food wise, you really never ate clean, huh? No, uh, I just want to be big. And what I mean, uh, I remember my handoff partner back in the day, Paul Roch, told me how to make the poor man protein shake with six rye eggs, cup a uh, cup of dry milk, uh, whole milk, chocolate syrup. And I was doing four of those. This is before you helped me. Right. And that got me up to 300. And at the time, on my meager salary at the restaurant, you know, I went to the shopping, Winco Shopping Center, and I would have to go down the aisle and get the Encore frozen lasagna, <laughs> Salisbury steak, and mac and cheese. Not poor. Yeah, you know, right, I, right. I had to do it. I, you know, I was working at a sports bar at the time, so I had a little bit of food to eat there. But, yeah, but dude, you want to be big, you got to eat big. frozen... Right, ready to eat Salisbury steaks. weren't they fucking good? They were good. God, I didn't, I didn't look at that taste. That. I just knew I had to eat that and a protein shake, that, that, and multiple times a day because I wanted to be three hundred like Paul Roch. Yeah, you know, I'm a handoff guy. See, I went the other way because in LA, you know, I was a bodybuilder before right. I was a powerlifter, right. so I just went with mostly good food. Right. You know, um, but twice a week I would throw pe whole pizzas down, oh, Chinese food, yeah. and it. At my practice, the team practice was like a smorgasbord every time he got there. It was like donuts, pizza, Chinese food, Indian food, like everybody would bring in something and it was just fucking ridiculous. So, I mean, I understand about that, but man, the shit catches up to you eventually. It does. It does. You Cholesterol, uh, you know, um, all those other things too. But, you know, I developed a great, fo a great natural foundation. Yeah. Lifting so many years and not having access to anabolics or anything. I think that was a blessing, and I, I, you know, well, dude, a lot of, you got real work in, real work in. I had a foundation. You, know, you always say you got to build the foundation before you build the house. Totally. And you know, a lot of guys start, you know, on the sauce and they um, end on the sauce. You know. Well, the thing about it is, is you know, especially guys that aren't genetically gifted, right? They solely rely, yeah, on steroids. Yeah. Like I have guys that would be fucking jacked, and then like six months later, I would see them, and they look like they had fucking AIDS. I really? was like, what the yeah. fuck? I would walk up to these guys and I'd look at them and they're like, I know. Yeah. But their wrists were that big. Yeah. Yeah. It you, was you, crazy. You know, like I always say, you know, genetically ungifted people are only going to go so far with supplements. I mean, Pee Wee Herman would never touch the weights that we do with all the steroids in the world. Right. So, you know, you, you got to you gotta <clears> have, have it here, man. It's yeah. a gift. Yeah. You know, you're either blessed with the foundation and you could work the foundation and make something out of it. Or you're not. Right. I would say eating, sleeping, training, supplementation technique, and then the, the fist is genetics. Yeah. You gotta, 100%. Uh, yeah, you got to have all those. Um, you got to maxify all those factors to be the best in the world. So, And that's what I, I, I prided myself at, you know? Absolutely. I, yeah, fuck soccer. I just wanted to be the best at the bench press. And, you know, my local gym at the time had a guy on the top there at three, 375 bench, and I hated him. And I wanted to beat him, and I did. Yeah. And then I went to my first Wabdol meet in um, May 17th, 1997. Gus. Yep. Gus Rethwich, and uh, set a state record and a junior world record. But, you know, he said world record. And I'm like, I, I have a world record? Like, you know, Gus had a, a, a pamphlet he would give the lifters. Yeah. And it had uh, Ken Lane, Anthony Clark in there. And I'm like, dude, I'm not a world record holder. Right. I don't know what that means. I mean, I mean in I'm, his federation. Yeah. I, but I thought when I was a world record holder, I was the best in the world. Right. And that's not true. No. And uh, I realized that these are the guys, you know, Anthony Clark, Ken Lane, that I, I have to surpass. Dude, and I got news for you. Yeah. The day I broke Anthony Clark's record, he died. Really? Dude, I was at the GNC, uh, GNC show of strength, and uh, I was going 800. Right. And uh, three times they fucking called me off. Okay. They, they red-lighted me. And I was like, what the fuck for, you know? Right. So I flattened my back out, and I just took it in and brought it all the way down, almost passed out, got the press call, and it was a green light. And... Uh, I'm fucking sitting there, and dude, I was so jacked, bro, I couldn't even talk to people, I was so fucking jacked, and all of a sudden, Herb Glossbrenner walks up to me, and he goes, Ed Cohn's fucking talking shit, how that lift wasn't good, uh oh, and dude, I lost my shit, bro, really, so I walk up to him, and I'm like, bro, are you fucking talking shit about me, I never heard and he story. looks at me, because I never told it, he looks at me, and he's like, uh, uh, and there's a banister going off the stage, I just go bang, and the banister goes nope. like that. And he looks at me and he goes, "No, no, we're cool. Your lift was good." I'm like, "Oh, well, Herb said something different." He's like, "No, no, no. I love that. That's yeah, great as awesome. fuck." But 
I was like not in the frame of mind that day. Understandable. You know what I mean? I, I've I've dealt with you at meets before, and I know on meet day you're a different cat. Uh, dude, I just I'm there. It's like I, I'm you win saying, or die. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah, destroy or be destroyed. You know. That's it. And I'm willing to die. That's like I'm willing to go all the fucking way. You know. I think that's what got me through prison. Really? You know. Well. I don't know, you guys have heard, I went to prison for three and a half years, my boy almost killed somebody and I took the rap and, you know, but when I was in prison and these motherfuckers would fuck with me, we'd be in our cells talking shit. Right. And I'd be like, dude, when this door opens, I'm fucking killing you, bro. And dude, I literally was fucking, this guy was fucking with me and we go out for lineup, like the doors open and you go in line and then you walk. Mm -hmm. This guy's in the cell behind me. So he gets up, he gets out, we get out, and I look, and he ain't there. And I was like, fucking so pissed, and all of a sudden he comes out. Dude, I turn around and I grab this motherfucker, and I'm just like, boom, against the walls, 